Well, uh, Suzanne, the Honorable Shakespeare, unfortunately, was not a businessman, so he could afford to say what's there in the name. But what's there in the name, the charcoal project? Can you explain it to all of us? Yes, I would love to explain that. Charcoal project is is something that was it was something that came to me when I was a little girl. I think I must have been five years old when design and the whole history of art and architecture played a huge part and a huge impact on me. And as I grew, I knew that I wanted to own a store one day, a store which was different, which was conceptual, which had a story. It wasn't about the furniture you sell, or about the products, but it was about the, the whole passion of the experience. And that's what I wanted to do for Charcoal Project. Now, Charcoal Project, why Charcoal Project? Charcoal, when you see it in, you know, in life, it's black. And it has no, um, it ha it's not beautiful, it's just, it could look like an ugly rock. But there is this quality when you ignite, when you fire it up. So when I enter a space, I feel that the space is like charcoal. It's dead, it has no excitement, there's nothing to it. But the life that you give to it and what you ignite into it, it becomes special. And so charcoal project, every project that I do, I want it to be charcoal project for me. That's what the Fantastic. Name. What, according to you, is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is just one word, Agnello, passion. If you love what you do, and if you can visualize what you want to achieve, then there is nothing in the world that can stop you. So if I believe that each person has an entrepreneur in them, and that the goal is to find that and to decide what you want to do to your best capacity. Fantastic, fantastic. How did you think about venturing into business on a big scale. What encouraged you to get into business? Because business has many other aspects. Honestly, I had no rules when I started off. I had no, um, I had no kind of structure as in every mistake that we made as a company was my learning. And each mistake brought me into a realization of wanting to learn an aspect that I didn't really get into, like administration, operations. Because in a business, being an entrepreneur, you can imagine and you can want things, but the eventuality is the, you know, it's the whole kind of joining the dots. It's connecting all the dots and all the people, all the team have to provide that service correctly so I understood that to create that, I need to hire good people. I need to have good minds, minds who are open to change, minds who wanted to grow. And that's when we kept hiring people on instinct. It was more of an instinct and less of experience. And we grew together as a company. Today, I call my team, Team Charcoal. They all are here today and I'm very proud of them. <laughs> Fantastic. So you believe in teamwork? Hundred percent. There is no single person who can do it all. There are two schools of thought for growth. One is to add more people and make your organization bigger. The other school of thought is collaborate and grow bigger. The third school of thought is do both simultaneously. What would you like to say about growth? How would you like to grow? I think that it's a bit of both. You need to have an organization that can handle the amount of pressure, because there are different departments, there's a design department, there's operations, there's administrations. Now each person has to be good at what they do, and we have to divide their work correctly so nobody feels over, you know, overbed and overloaded. Uh, and at the same time, you need to collaborate outside with associates who can help you, as in the person who's the founder, grow, because there is this much that a person can do. But if there is an intelligent mind that you have an instinct that this mind can help you go forward in your business, collaboration is one of the most important things, according to me. Today, the world has become really small. 
you can do a lot of work even on mail and you know on i chat technology is a huge asset so i think that it's a bit of both that makes a big difference 100%. and what are the parameters that you identify to get into a collaboration and can you name a few collaborations like even if we have um, some of the architects that i have really followed and uh, you know had a very reputable organization so i decide i said you know there is okay i'll give you an example there's one rendering company and the rendering company is in paris france but nobody has done rendering from them from this part of the world so they ask me my team ask me that why should we choose them why don't we choose somebody else but then you understand that that collab collaboration is going to bring a new language in your design because that will set you apart from what everybody else is doing and so how are you going to set yourself apart you need to be different and you need to be something surprising something so the collaboration between the paris company and me is an important asset even if it is a little bit more expensive it's going to be better for the future uh suzan can you throw light on what difference did the californian education make to your learning i just think that um there is a very strong um design brain that that gets that can get activated with the correct teaching and the correct atmosphere atmosphere teaching is what can inspire a child to be better and fortunately for me i was lucky enough to go to california at 17 and i was lucky enough to be in that environment and that was a huge uh, asset to me because i think that the first day of my design class the teacher told me this one line which i will never forget that there is no wrong design so if you can prove it and explain it it's correct eventually i want to open a design school which i spoke to agnello about and bring in more talent because india is filled with such great talent i have such amazing people but if they had even more of an uh, of of an environment or a teaching it would make them grow to a certain capacity and that's what i i think what made a huge difference in my life so as an entrepreneur today what is your learning edge how do you take yourself forward than what it was yesterday that's the best question you have asked me right now <laughs> <laughs> the only way that a person can be open to learning is when the person feels like a child the person should be open a child when i see my children they are like sponge whatever you give them they will absorb i feel that when when youngsters grow into teenagers and they grow into adults they lose that they lose the capacity to absorb they lose the capacity to kind of like be open to take criticism be open to grow and even if you are a bachelor's in you know the, the best university in architecture you could be wrong in something that a normal person who's from your from your staff could tell you you know so the whole thing is that you have to be open and you have to know that that's your learn for me that's my learning edge to have an open mind to have a curious mind i'm a really curious mind so how do you learn do you read books do you travel do you visit uh, exhibitions do you meet renowned architects how do you learn i think that like see if you if you have the open mind every individual that you meet you can learn from places countries various types of uh, architecture art art and architecture are huge for me because when you travel is when your mind expands and then you understand what why why in those those places they use those materials so it's always what if or why why were they doing all those things so you keep you keep your mind curious you keep your mind activated and what is your competitive edge that is my first question my second question is what is competition to you i don't really um like to you know be in a game of trying to get to a position in my life 
I believe that if you are good at what you do, and if you think purely and if it is original design, then you will reach where you want to reach. Your competitors should be your friends. They should be closer to you because, you, in fact, that's where you learn, because you learn what they are doing and they learn from you. And then you can, it, the world is so big and there are so many projects that you can collaborate and work together and provide a better service. So nobody should be a threat. Nobody should be somebody who you are worried for. In fact, you should think of how you can get that person's value added in your life and make your business better. Fantastic, fantastic. And I believe in manifestation because manifestation is how you make all your visualize, all your, you know, your visions come alive. So I think that it's, it, is, it is a journey that you need to just keep taking those little baby steps because nothing happens overnight. And you should not get disheartened when things go wrong or when people don't like what you're doing at that point. It should be just something that you learn, okay, now I need to do this better. And that's how you can grow, you know. How do you see, as an entrepreneur, how do you, you see yourself going forward? The eventuality for charcoal project will have to be real estate. To bring, again, a new product, a new experience, so that you're not, um, so you're not like stuck in one. Each one will be different to the other. There will be some elements that you will be able to tell that this is charcoal project. But yes, so that's my eventual dream. <laughs> Fantastic. And what is your vision? You know, the thing is that each day when I come to my store, I I cross all these buildings which are right now empty because they're in construction and when I go to Delhi I cross buildings which are construction and I just visualize each one of those apartments having products from charcoal and I just think I said you know if I could charcoal the the entire environment that wherever I go if I could charcoal it I know that I would leave some energy from my passion in that space. And I think that's a vision that I want to do eventually, all parts of the world, God willing. But I'm, I think baby steps have to do it with baby steps. <laughs>